We are visiting one of the great cities of Europe, and yet it is not very well known, which makes Ghent, Belgium, a special destination that you would love to discover and be happy to spend several days there. The waterfront along the river at Grasley, with its 500-year-old buildings, is one of the great parts of the city, and there are so many other things to discover in Ghent, Belgium, a city that you might not be very familiar with. Kornmarkt is one of the most popular gathering places with restaurants and bars and shops, busy with locals and visitors night and day. A top attraction is this spectacular castle, 800 years old. Walk along its fortified wall and explore the many rooms inside. Then bombard your senses with a walk down Graffiti Alley with pictures changing all the time. This 91 meter high belfry tower was built in the 14th century and you can go up to the top for a splendid view looking out over the central part of Ghent. Fans of Gothic architecture will love visiting inside the cathedral, no admission charge, but if you want to see one of the greatest paintings in the history of art, you pay a small fee. The Masterpiece by Jan van Eyck in a chapel surrounded by stained glass. The streets of Ghent are perfect for strolling. Take a walk, sit down at a sidewalk restaurant and watch the people go by, have a meal, have a drink. Just enjoy this beautiful setting. Get around with the convenient tram system and see other parts of town. With green parks where you can get away from the city and take a stroll, check out the canals and visit some of the museums. We'll be taking you to four of the major museums of town later in the program, covering art, history, and technology. And then how about a boat ride? A 45 minute journey on the water passing so many of the great old buildings of town, ending back at that beautiful central canal where we are going to spend some time. It's curious that Belgium and the city of Ghent are not very well known to visitors. Compared to the other busy countries of Europe, Belgium gets relatively few tourists, and yet it's a fantastic place to visit. And Ghent is one of the best of all Belgian cities, as you're about to find out. Located in Flanders in the northern part of the country, just 30 minutes from Brussels by train, easy to reach. The historic center of Ghent is compact, just 800 meters wide, with so many things to see. And we'll take you beyond that to show you the rest of town. Let's begin our detailed visit to Ghent at my favorite location, the river in the center of town with beautiful promenades along both sides. It's busy all afternoon and right into the evening and makes a good place to start your day. When you're in Ghent, it really pays to get up early, say about seven o'clock in the morning, take a stroll before breakfast and enjoy the sunrise, especially near the canals. You'll get the reflection and it's nice and peaceful and quiet. There's hardly anybody out at seven, 7.30 in the morning. And it makes for a delightful picture opportunity. We're standing on St. Michael's Bridge, one of the great viewpoints of the city especially here in the early morning with the flock of pigeons flying by and that view looking down at the river with the Grassley Embankment. It is quite popular throughout the daytime with local people and visitors gathering to enjoy the scene, have a conversation, maybe a little picnic along the waterfront. There are plenty of outdoor restaurants along both sides of the river here, but it seems like the locals enjoy just hanging out on the cobblestone pavement. This is certainly one of the major gathering places in the city for young folks. It's a big university town, and those students definitely enjoy spending time here at Grasley. The action continues all day and into the night, which is a very special time with that beautiful lighting on the old historic buildings and bridges. It's all very safe and friendly here. This waterway was the main harbor of Ghent as far back as the Middle Ages when this city was one of the largest and most wealthy cities in all of Northern Europe. 
These beautiful buildings were headquarters for the guilds and the merchants that made this city function. We'll come back and see a bit more of Grasley later, but there are so many other places to show you in this amazing city. Cornmarkt is right next to Grasley and generally considered to be the main square of town. There are lots of outdoor restaurants here and more of those historic buildings. It's a great place for walking or you could take a tram. The very busy and popular line number one comes right through the middle of Cornmarkt. And notice how pedestrians and bicycles can go right onto the tram track area after the train passes. The historic center of Ghent is an automobile restricted zone, which means that it's practically for pedestrians only. There are trams and taxis allowed in here and a few cars with authorized permits, making this one of the largest car-free zones in all of Europe. As a result, you'll find many outdoor restaurants practically everywhere. That grand old building with the towers opened in 1898 as the main post office of Ghent. Since then, it's been converted into a luxury hotel and has several large shops, which preserve the historic interior. Kornmark also has St. Nicholas, a large Gothic church. Another large square nearby is the Friday Market, which does have an outdoor market on Friday and Saturday and is busy every day of the week. The tower dates to the 15th century and was headquarters for the Tanners Guild. And now it's a center for Dutch language poetry. The oldest major building of town is a castle that dates back to the 12th century. This is Gravenstein, the castle of the counts a remarkable medieval fortress nestled right in the heart of town, generally considered to be the number one attraction of the city. It's the only remaining medieval castle in Flanders with a moat and a well-preserved large stone structure. The entrance is defended by a gatehouse which leads into the large castle yard. Gravenstein is a testament to the city's medieval past and offers an immersive journey into the life and times of the Middle Ages. It's a short walk up the narrow spiral staircase which leads you to the top of the towers. From this vantage point, you get breathtaking panoramic views of Ghent. Looking back to where we had just been at Grasley, and you'll see many other parts of town, including those medieval skyscraper towers that define the skyline you get to walk all the way around the tower at the top of this keep, and you can stroll the entire perimeter of the outer walls, lined with crenellated battlements and numerous stone towers. Visitors can explore various rooms and chambers, each meticulously restored to showcase different aspects of life during the era. Stone-ribbed Gothic ceiling vaults are held up by impressive columns. The castle was not only built to defend the city from external attack, but also to control the unruly population of the city itself, to enforce the absolute power of the count. You can see why this amazing structure is the number one attraction for visitors to the city. You don't want to miss that when you're in Ghent. The neighborhood all around the castle is quite fascinating with cobblestone lanes and restaurants, and a section of town called Patters Hall, a most enjoyable place for a stroll and a meal. Before entering Patters Hall, there are some lovely streets such as this with a vegetarian restaurant called Epiphany's Kitchen, serving a very delicious bruschetta. Streets in this neighborhood are a little bit more narrow and quiet than the streets that we've seen in the historic center of town with a mix of locals and visitors enjoying this tranquil atmosphere. Crossing the river along this quaint little bridge brings us into that neighborhood of Patters Hall, known for its narrow cobblestone streets, historic buildings, variety of shops and cafes and many restaurants. There are a few small hotels such as the Nonam Hotel and some vacation rentals in the neighborhood but Pattersall is more of a restaurant neighborhood rather than a place to stay overnight in a hotel. There is one particular restaurant street called Odberg in this neighborhood that has 
probably got the longest stretch of restaurants in all of Ghent. With a few shops and galleries tossed in, but mostly it's a great place to eat at an outdoor table with a huge variety of international foods available. After 200 meters, there are no more restaurants and the street changes names to Cronle, so cross the bridge over to the main part of the historic center. This giant red cannon was made in the early 15th century. It was designed to be a powerful weapon. However, it was a dud. Fired once and it did not work. No surprise, you'll find more restaurants and quaint little streets. And there's also a broad pedestrian thoroughfare with lots of shops. They're all closed at this hour of the evening, but that's a nice place to walk also. This street changes names a few times, but continues for three kilometers going all the way to the train station through the central part of Ghent. It really is the main commercial spine of the city. Now it's taking us back through Kornmark, that major square we saw earlier. Later we'll take you all the way down that street. For now, it's time to turn in, get some rest, and then enjoy a fine breakfast next morning at my hotel 1898 The Post. They have a tasty buffet and they will cook your eggs to order. The breakfast lounge is also the wine bar in the evening, a great place to hang out. The view out the window is of Grasley, where we're going to take another stroll. There are the breakfast room windows in this classic building that was the post office back in 1898, right along the shores of Grasley. The windows we're passing now behind those black umbrellas are for the shop that we went into earlier. And the buildings just beyond have some fascinating stories to tell. On the left, we have the corn meter house, which is where they measured the grain. And on the right, it's the Free Shippers Guild Hall, headquarters for the shipping merchants. These buildings and the other structures nearby representing more of the merchants were very critical to the success of Ghent as far back as the Middle Ages. Because Ghent was the economic powerhouse of Europe for a while strategically located on the waterways to act as a trading center, bringing in grain for redistribution and also bringing in wool for the textile industries of Ghent. It all happened right here in this one stretch of river that was the main harbor. Now it's a place for recreational boating, eating, drinking, talking with your friends, having a good time and enjoying this spectacularly beautiful environment. The Baroque facade above the restaurants was headquarters for another sailor's guild. This side of the river is called the Cornlay, and here Marriott has an excellent hotel, which had been a former pleasure house for the sailors back in the old days. Cornlay embankment on one side, Grasslay on the other, each with their own separate character. Cornlay has a long row of restaurants where people love to hang out and have a drink, enjoy their spritz. And there is a broad promenade with an open terrace that attracts some people. Very lovely. The Grasslay side does attract more people. It's got the restaurants and it's got a longer promenade and it's closer to the center of town. So naturally there are more folks who are gravitating to Grasslay. You are welcome to sit at a waterfront table and just have a drink if you choose, or have a meal. There are lots of restaurants to pick from. Now granted, it's somewhat of a touristic place to eat, but the setting is so perfect and the food will be fine, so go ahead and indulge. If you're looking for a gourmet meal, maybe just have a drink here and go elsewhere. Or why not have a picnic? Do it yourself. A supermarket is around the corner for food and drink, so just bring it over. Or maybe you are just out for a stroll later in the day and want to take a walk and watch people eating and drinking, do some people watching here. It's a great spot for it. There is just something very special about a setting like this, along a waterfront with restaurants and people walking, surrounded by very old, well-preserved buildings that have a lot of meaning for the history of the place and just the ambiance, the music, the food, the drinks. 
it is a superb place to spend some time. There are not a lot of other places in Europe with such a wonderful waterfront setting. Of course, there are some, especially in the Netherlands, cities filled with canals and embankments along the sides of the canal. Of course, Amsterdam has miles of canals with a lot of restaurants out front. Utrecht is a great example of wide promenades along both sides of the canal. But even the European ultimate canal city of Venice does not have a lot of examples of this kind of ambiance with restaurants along both sides of the Grand Canal. Perhaps at the Rialto, where you've got the bridge and beautiful restaurants on both sides. But of course, that is extremely touristic, 100%. Whereas here in Ghent, it's a mix of locals and visitors all enjoying the place together making this place so special, perhaps unique in all of Europe. You can take a boat ride that will bring you back and forth and into some of the side channels, pick it up right here at the loading dock on the river, or why not just row your own boat? You can get a little raft or a kayak. No license or experience required. The river continues south underneath the arch of St. Michael's Bridge, with more walkways along both sides and splendid views of all the waterfront action with boats going by and people paddling. Keep on walking, it's a great place to discover and you'll find another series of outdoor restaurants along this stretch of the river promenade. And maybe you can stop for another drink or have some more food. It does seem a bit less touristic than that stretch along Grosley. While there, enjoy those views looking out over the river with boats tied up at the docks. There is a lot more to see in this south part of town that we will get to shortly. You can go on foot or take the tram. A little recap of where we've been as shown on the map along the river just south of Grosley. Next, we're visiting two major sites in the center of town, the Belfry and Cathedral. Then heading south along that main retail street the Belfry is a major landmark you would enjoy and you can go to the top for a view. When you start climbing up, it seems like, oh, many steps, I'm going to have to walk all the way, but then surprise, surprise, there's an elevator that takes you up most of the way. Built in the Gothic style in the early 14th century, the tower is 91 meters tall, 299 feet. So you will certainly enjoy this fabulous view looking out in the center of town. You can walk around it to see in all directions. The tower was a symbol of city pride and was a lookout tower. Of course, it was built primarily to ring bells, which it still does today, as we saw in the room with the carillon drum rotating and ringing the bells. Historical exhibits are in several tower levels, including the original dragon, which has been in the tower since 1377, the Guardian of the Belfry. This cloth hall has been at the tower base since 1425 as a center for the textile trade. The Belfry is one of 33 towers on the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Belgium, a group of medieval bell towers recognized for their cultural significance. Next to it, on the same square, is St. Bavos, the Cathedral of Ghent. Inside, there is spectacular Gothic architecture and a painting that some visitors consider to be the number one reason to come visit Ghent. We'll show you that in a moment. The interior is a breathtaking display of side chapels, soaring arches, elegant columns, and an abundance of stained glass windows. Upon stepping into the chapel at the back of the church, you will come face to face with what is considered one of the most important and beautiful paintings in the history of art. Painted by Jan van Eyck and his brother Hubert in the 1420s. It's the first major oil painting and marked the artistic transition from medieval to Renaissance art. It depicts the adoration of the mystic lamb the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. There are many different panels representing bishops, church officials, 
saints and biblical figures and ordinary worshipers and angels, some of them singing, celebrating the glory of God and heavenly redemption. The setting inside this Gothic cathedral adds immensely to the effect of the painting. For another kind of artistic experience, take a walk down Graffiti Alley, a place where anything goes. Everybody is welcome to make their contribution, which is an ever-changing display as contemporary as this morning. You will find more conventional street art elsewhere in town. A short walk brings us back to Cornmark, which wraps up our visit to the historic center of Ghent and now we're taking a big journey just south of here, starting out by tram and then doing some walking through a fascinating kilometer long strip of shops, side lanes, more restaurants, of course. And we'll take you to a park at the end of the road and some museums. We began this segment in the historic center at Cornmark, and now we're going down that main shopping street by tram and walking and we'll explore those little side lanes. This will take us away from that more touristic center of town into the modern city. It's the other side of town that you don't see in a lot of guidebooks. The authentic heart and soul of town where locals are out shopping and eating and drinking. We know Belgians like their beer, but you can also get very good wine in most restaurants and the occasional wine bar. What's the name of the place? Parole. 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 Well, the bar is in, in, the, in the city center of Ghent, and we have a beautiful selection by the glass, and we only serve European wine, so wines that are coming from the continent, uh -huh. and even Belgian wine. Oh, Belgian wines. <laughs> Belgian wines. So, most well, welcome. The bar is on a little side lane just off of that main street we've been on, the Veldstraat. Okay, guys. <laughs> Walking around down here, I ran into some friendly kids uh, who were happy to act up for the video. Notice the beautiful design of Veldstrap with those wide cobblestone sidewalks and a single track for the tram and bicycles. It's a neighborhood where the side lanes can be at least as interesting as the main street, so by all means, go venturing off left and right where you might find a vegan restaurant. And tell me the name of the restaurant. Uh, so we're at Le Botanist. It's a very efficient system with the food laid out so you can point and choose and then it's served up to you and you can head to a table either indoors or out. It was delicious. Or how about some Asian food at Knees to Chin, a restaurant group with seven outlets in Belgium, specializing in rice paper rolls. Around the corner on Koopandelsplein, you'll see a couple of beautiful outdoor restaurants casual, affordable, local-style food. Apparently no tourists in sight, located right on a street with a tram running down the middle of it. A block away, we arrive at a famous plaza called Kauter, one of the most fashionable public squares in town during the 18th century and still beautiful. Famous for its flower markets and musical concerts in the bandstand. come back for more music towards the end of the program. On that same street, you'll see the Ghent Opera House, home base for opera and ballet. In the first half of the 19th century, rich Ghent industrialists initiated the building of this luxurious opera house, which now presents the best national and international artists, offering concerts, youth performances, opera, ballet, and much more. A block away, we see this grand neoclassical building that had been the main court of justice in Ghent. These old law courts are still used for the court of appeal. It's located on the Kettlevart Canal, which is another place the kayakers will come paddling down. And there's a lovely waterfront restaurant on the bank. We'll cross the bridge in a moment, but first have a look at the river that connects up with that canal. It's a popular recreational boating river with a marina along the banks. There are several little alleyways that'll take you down to that waterfront. This one looks like we're back in Graffiti Alley. And yet on nearly all the streets of Ghent, you do not see graffiti. 
We're continuing on that same long street, but here it's changed names again to Niederkauter. It's still an interesting city street with those shops along it. It's wider, there's two tracks for trams, the sidewalks are more narrow, making this a good time to hop on the tram and jump ahead to our next destination, which is the city's main park and three major museums. It's very useful to purchase the Ghent City Card, which gives you free rides on all of the public transit and free entry to nearly all of the museums in town and a free boat ride and bicycle rental. We have arrived at Citadel Park, a sprawling 36 hectares of lush greenery, winding pathways and picturesque ponds, an ideal retreat from the urban buzz. There are fountains, statues, and 780 trees in what had been the grounds of a fortress. On the edge of the park, we reach the Museum of Fine Arts with 40 galleries containing 600 works of art from the Middle Ages to the present day with paintings, sculpture, graphics, and decorative arts with a beautiful and relaxing interior design. Old masters hang alongside Impressionists, Surrealists, and Modernists, with the oldest piece dating back to the 14th century. Naturally, the museum is well known as a knowledge center for Belgian art, with extensive collections from the 19th and first half of the 20th century. They include famous artists like Rembrandt, Bosch, Van Dyck, Roger van der Weyden, Rodin, and René Magritte. Located just in front of it is SMAC, the Belgian acronym for City Museum of Contemporary Art, a relatively new museum that opened in 1999. The city of Ghent is known for rebelliousness and its contemporary art museum is every bit as dynamic and unconventional as Ghent itself. A few blocks over is a museum of history and heritage, offering a journey through the past and present times of Ghent. Part of the museum building was once a medieval abbey, and many of the artifacts on display reflect that old heritage. Terracotta models, humorous puppets, sumptuous interior reconstructions, and wonderful displays bring you right up to the modern day. We've got just one more museum to go on the north end of the historic center. It's the Industry Museum, located in a former cotton factory. It's actually quite fascinating because it explains how Ghent became such a economic powerhouse starting from the Middle Ages, primarily because of textiles. Importing wool and cotton and turning those raw materials into finished textiles with their advanced use of machinery. Belgians were pioneers of the industrial age. Printing was also a major industry for 300 years, as shown with many old and new printing presses, and demonstrated with hands-on activities. Well, congratulations, you have now completed a comprehensive tour of the city of Ghent in the heart of Belgium. But it's not over yet, we have a couple of musical bonuses for you with a lot more scenes of this beautiful city. We'll take you on a boat tour through the canals and river, then at the end of the show, we'll take you to that flower market with music from the bandstand. The music for our boat ride is provided by this street busking couple called Tamis Duo. And so the rest of the program will be a music video filmed with additional scenes of wonderful Ghent and no further narration. Ces choses que j'ai pu faire à d'autres que toi, des bagarres, bras de fer, réveil où je suis peu fier avec d'autres que toi. Sous sa bouche, j'entends mourir au loin 
The town crier. Oh, the town crier. Town crier, yeah, okay. Uh... frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.